Let's discuss sampling and outliers. That's why I put this uh, chemistry cat here, right? There are two types of people in this world, those can, who can extrapolate from incomplete data. <laughs> Obviously, there's not the second one. That's the joke. So um, when we have data and we want to interpret it or make some conclusions out of it, it's important to think about how we actually gathered the data, but also you know how we present it. So this is going to be just a lot of things I'm just going to read to you quickly, but I've got something important about outliers. It's just a good idea to have a few definitions here. So first, discrete data as opposed to continuous. Discrete means exact numbers, things you can count. So things that come in you know, integer numbers, like number of plums on my tree, number of students in a class, whatever. I mean, you know, number of cats uh, in your house. I don't know. There's things that you can count. One, two, three. You don't get, you know, decimals of them. By contrast, we've got continuous data, which is something that's found in a certain range. So there doesn't have to be uh, integer values. It can be something, you know, where you, you find a certain range, maybe as a decimal, like the height of students. So maybe we have it, you know, in meters. So we said like 1.72 or 1. I don't know five, eight meters or something. So this is something with decimals. Those are the, the two main categorizations here. Um, we've also got something called a population as opposed to a sample. So population is when we've actually gotten all the data. So that means like if we wanted to find out what happens in a class, we would sample everyone in the class or something like that. Or, you know, a population of a country, we'd have to ask every single person in the country in order to have a real population. As opposed to a sample, that's when we have a smaller part. So, you know, you take a, yeah, a sample of the population. Now in SL, we're going to assume all the data sets are the population. We're going to assume that uh, everything is fully representative. In real life, it's not always like that. In HL, you have to be more careful. But for SL, we're going to say it's representative of the population. That's going to be important when we do the mean and the standard deviation. Now, if our data is going to be reliable, there's a few things that it has to sort of pass. So first, it has to be repeatable. So if someone makes a claim, you have to be able to you know, repeat it and make sure you get the same results. Now, you might also have missing data. So, I mean, that can affect your reliability. So, you know, you might want to monitor things carefully, maybe get good samples. Bias is an important thing. That's when you have results favoring one outcome over another. So, I don't know, maybe you only sampled you know, boys in class and not the girls. Well, then you're obviously not getting a good sample. So sometimes bias can be really important. And that a big part of what we try to do when we're gathering data is to try to minimize this bias. We try to find ways to systematize our way of, of gathering data so that we reduce the bias. It's not always perfect. You can't always, re you know, remove it, but at least we try to reduce it. That's the goal. So there's a few ways that we actually do the sampling. These are some of the, the terms that we use here. One is called simple random. So let's say you want to gather a bunch of data. You would say, ah, oh, we'll give an equal chance of choosing something. So, you know, you choose out of a hat, you use a random number generator. So I tried to give an example, like let's say you're trying to poll all the students from school. You want to ask them all some question, like what do you think about blah, blah, blah. Well, you can assign every single student a number. You know, maybe you go in alphabetical order. Every single student gets a number. One, two, three, four, five, six, whatever. Then you use a random number generator that'll choose them. And that's those are the ones you would pull. That's a simple random. Um, we've got something called convenience. Well, there you just ask the easiest people, maybe your friends, whatever. Now, obviously, that might be really bad because maybe you don't sample a very good uh, you know, population. So that's the problem, right? It might not be representative. Systematic. This is when you choose a random starting point, but then use a fixed interval. So what that could mean is you might make a list of all the students in the class, and maybe I don't know, you pick like yeah, every third student or something. So that way you go like you know one, you know four, whatever. That way at least it's systematic. You've got some kind of system going on for choosing them. Quota. Well, this is one where you know you want your sample size in proportion to who you're polling. So let's just say in a school, maybe there were 55% girls and 45% boys in the school. Now you don't necessarily want to ask every single person in the school. Maybe you can't for some reason. So what you do is say, well, I know. I'll make sure that my sample that I have contains 55% girls and 45% boys, so it's somewhat, you know, the same proportion at least. Stratified, there we split things into smaller groups. Let's say like, uh, you know, the first year of the diploma program versus the second year. So maybe we do it like that. That's just some ways of doing the sampling. Now, let's get uh, a little bit deeper here. We'll do outliers. By the way, I don't know if you've ever seen this webcomic called XKCD. This guy, Randall Monroe, is an absolute genius. You should for sure check him out, xkcd.com.
This guy does all sorts of funny jokes, but this is one. I like this girl. She's like, uh, can my boyfriend come along? I'm not your boyfriend. You totally are. I'm casually dating a number of people. Yeah, but you spend twice as much time with me as anyone else. I'm a clear outlier. Ah, well, your math is inf- irrefutable. <laughs> Face it, I'm your statistically significant other. I think it's cute. But it has to do with outliers, right? Look, this is an outlier. So if we have data points, maybe we want to remove. You don't always remove outliers. You have to sort of decide yourself, uh, and it's based on the situation, right? But you might want to remove values if they fall too far outside your criteria. That's what we call an outlier. It's something maybe we want to do that with. So first, we have to assume that the data is normally distributed. I'm going to have some videos later on showing you about that. But basically what it says is if this is your you know, x values here, what we would say is if we looked at the frequency of these things, if this here is the frequency, so how often they happen here, it would be something like a normal distribution would have some sort of shape like this right here. So that means here would be the mean. We have this thing called a standard deviation. I'm going to have some videos showing you all about that. Okay, So this is like mean plus sigma, and this right here is mean minus sigma. I'll be showing you some videos about all that stuff. But if we can assume it's normally distributed, then we can define something about an outlier. So an outlier is going to be something that, uh, a good way to state it, maybe I'll say it's this, it's more than, so it's more than uh, 1.5 times IQR from uh, a quartile, or from the nearest quartile, maybe it's a better way to say it, from the nearest quartile. This is like a good sort of formal definition for it. This isn't on your formula booklet. Um, maybe a better way to write it. I'll try to maybe write it down a little bit clearer maybe. I'll say outlier here like this. Out, whoops, outlier. So what would that mean? It would be, uh, let's see, if you're Q1, it would be Q1 minus 1.5 IQR. Okay, so if it's, uh, well, I'll say this. Maybe I should move it here. I'll say less than, whoops, I shouldn't do that. I'll do undo. Maybe I'll just move this if I can here. Let's see, can I move this? No, of course not. Fine, I'll just say less than. So if the value is actually less than this, then we would consider it an outlier. Or if it's more than, so if it's greater than Q3 plus 1.5, times IQR, which is the interquartile range. This is how we can define the outlier. So we can say, all right, if some value lies below this, so below, uh, you know, Q, whoops, I should have said Q1, like the first quartile minus this, or Q3 plus this, we're basically choosing some value and saying if it's above something or below something, then it's called an outlier. Let me show you an example with some numbers. Maybe it'll make more sense. We have some sort of data set here. Blah, 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 blah. We want to find out that if 52 is an outlier. So again, I'm just going to write it down here. So again, an outlier is if it's less than, I'll just write it down again because it's a good idea. If it's less than uh, Q1 minus 1.5 times IQR or more than or greater than Q3 plus 1.5 IQR. Well, how am I going to figure out this? I'm going to do this on my calculator. So I'm going to open up my good old calculator. I'm going to go to menu and go to lists. So I got to put it into the information here. I'll call this, uh, I don't know, data. Maybe I'll just call it D A T A. There we go. That's my data. All right. And I'll just put in my numbers. So 16, I've got 14, I've got 3, I've got 12, I've got 15, whoops, I have a mistake here, don't I? 14, 3, 12, got to make sure I do it right, 15, 17, let's see, what else do I have? 22, 15, and 52. Now, if you just looked at the data, Outliers are probably going to be the outside most ones. So what's the least one? Uh, three is the least. What's the greatest one? 52. So it's probably either three or 52. Let's check. So how do I do this? I got to do some statistics on it. So I'm going to go to menu and go stats and say stat calculations. Give me one variable statistics. Yep. My list is going to be, let's see, I do the right arrow here to choose data. 
and say go. All I needed from this was the, um, I need Q1 and Q3. Look, Q1 is, ni is 13, so I'll write that down. So I need to know that, right? So Q1 is 13, I'll maybe write that down here. Q1, Q1 equals 13. I know that Q3 equals, what was it again? It was, I'll look it up here, 19.5. Uh, okay, 19.5. All right, so what is 1.5 IQR? I need to know that value as well, I guess. So let me take a look at that. What's 1.5 times the IQR? Well, that's going to be equal to, let's see, 1.5 times 19.5, whoops, 0.5, that is, minus 13. All right, so let me actually just figure out what that is, because I'd like to know what that is. I'm going to go to maybe add a new page. As a calculator, and let's do that. So we wanted to go 19.5, uh, what do we want to do? A minus 13, well, we didn't need a calculator for that, but there we go. Uh, that times 1.5, this is my magic number here, 9.75, okay? That's gonna be my magic number, so that's equal to 9.75. So what this means is that is an outlier if, let's see here, I'll write this down, so outlier, if it's less than, I'm going to do the less than one. Less than Q1, which is, let's see, Q1, which is um, 13, minus 9.75. Let's do that, right? So if you're not sure, you go in your calculator, you say 13 minus this. That'll be, what, 3.75? Yep. There you go. Oh, 3.25, sorry. So that means 3.25. That means, so if it's less than... If it's less than 3.25, it's an outlier. Are there any numbers that are less than 3.25? Yes, so actually I could state then that, aha, three is an outlier. Now what's interesting is the question didn't want us necessarily to find that, but too bad I found an extra one, right? So three is an outlier because it's less than 3.25. And the other one is going to be, let's see, if something is greater than, greater than, and let's see here, it's gonna be, Q3, which is 19.5 here, so 19.5 plus 9.75, right? So we'll do that right there. We'll go 19.5 plus, what was the number again? Oh, yeah, 9.75. There we go. So that's 29.25. So anything larger than 29.25. Do we have any numbers that are larger than, so greater than, then 29.25, do we have any of those numbers? Um, yes, we do, 52. So do you see how we can also state then that 52 is an outlier? So actually it turns out, although they only asked us about 52 being an outlier, we've also found that three was an outlier. They're both outliers. You might decide to remove them then for that reason. So why is this stuff important? Well, I mean, knowing how to take good samples is really important. When to remove data points is important for stats. Also, this might help you for your internal assessment, for example, your IAs, because you're probably having to gather your own data if you do at least one on stats. So this stuff is important, especially the outlier stuff, but an overview of the different kinds of uh, sampling techniques and bias are also a good idea to know.